And of course the next thing that we want to do is actually in implement this class in a source file. So I'm going to create a new item, which I'm going to call it clock.cpp. And the first thing that I'm going to do in this file is just include our header file. Uh, Self-explanatory. And then I'm going to implement the constructor that we declared in the header file. <coughs> um, few jobs, this is this got a few jobs. First thing I'm going to do is create a new int 64. Uh, local scope just over the constructor uh, called counts per sec and then we're going to initialize that along with our member in 64s to 0 then we're going to initialize our uh, floating point member variable seconds per count to 0 as well um, and then we're going to start doing really the main the main thing that we want this constructor to do um, and before I explain what this is I'll just explain a little bit about how we're going to um, implement our clock. Basically we can query the system uh, and we can get information uh, that which is in the units of counts so counts like this and basically you can kind of think about it as uh, C a C one count is a CPU cycle or something like that um, and we can use these counts to basically uh, see um, see how how fast our computer can run, or how many uh, computations it can e execute per second, or something like that. And then that's basically what this function will uh, tell us. So we call this function query performance frequency and then uh, it's basically going to hook up this uh, int64 here with the uh, number of counts per second that our system uh, will be able to do um, and I've put a comment about this here which you can read and then one of the, m one of the most important points about it is uh, this frequency number won't change uh, while our system is running so we only need to call it once in our program, which is why I'm going to do it in the constructor because we know that once we initialize counts per sec, we know it's never going to change. And yeah, this is just the number of counts per second. So it's basically uh, the ratio of performance per unit time or something like that. <coughs> or the number of operations per unit time, counts per sec. And then I'm going to initialize the member variable seconds per count, uh, which is obviously just it's just one over counts per second, you know, basic maths. One over counts per second is seconds per count. So that's all this constructor is going to do. The next method that I'm going to implement is the initialize, which looks like this. Um, this just has one call in it real simple and it's going to call another one of these queries to query the system called query performance counter and what this is going to do is hook up our member variable here our int64 with an initial timestamp so basically when we query the performance counter it will return a number which is equivalent to a timestamp so you know this counts here and this returns it in counts as well so we're going to get a timestamp there real simple and the final method and really the the main the main thing that we're going to be using this class for is the update method um, and I'll just um, well, I'll explain what it is first we're going to capture another timestamp so we're going to query performance counter again but this time we're going to hook it up with the current timestamp, which is a, which is another member variable. The first one was initial timestamp. See, query performance counter initial timestamp in the initialize method. In the second one, we're going to hook up the current timestamp. So we've got two timestamps, and we're going to get one with the initialize method. Then we're going to do some coding. You know, we're going to execute some other program. Sorry, and then we're going to get another timestamp. And what that's going to enable us to do is calculate the difference in counts between the two timestamps. 
which is just what we're going to do here in this line. So after we've got the, uh, the second timestamp, we're going to calculate the difference, which is the current timestamp minus the initial timestamp, casting them both to floats. And then if we times it by our seconds per count variable, which we worked out in the constructor, here, seconds per count, we can get the units in something we're more familiar with, which is, of course, seconds. So, I initialize this uh, local float here called dt, or difference in time, or delta time, with the amount in seconds, with the difference in seconds between the two timestamps. So, you can kind of think about it, it's doing something quite clever. It's uh, basically returning the time difference between when initialize was called in our program and when update is called, it's going to return the difference in time because of course what we do after that is return dt which is why I wanted to return a float um, and then also the third line in this method is just going to set the initial timestamp to the value of the current timestamp and what this means is that we never have to call initialize again, we can just call it once and then when we call update for the first time we'll get the difference in time since it called initialize and then when we call update again it will get the difference in time since when we called update previously back in the past so you can yeah it's doing, it's doing something really clever it's kind of like saying um, we'll call update and then two seconds will pass we'll call update again and then it'll return the value two because two seconds have passed in since we uh, subsequent calls of update so quite clever and that's that's it for this clock that's all we're going to do now we just want uh, we really just want a way of determining um, how many seconds have passed since we've called update and that's what we'll do here and that's the clock